Hello once again, Purple Eagles fans, and welcome to PurpleEagles.com. My name is Todd Callen, one of the play-by-play -play voices here at Niagara University. Very pleased to be joined today by men's basketball head coach Chris Casey for our season preview interview. Coach, thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me, Todd. Now, Coach, let's dive right into your roster, and let's start with Matt Scott, one of your stellar returning players, averaged over 15 points a season ago. Talk about what you expect from Matt as he looks to raise his game to the next level this season. Well, Matt made a big jump from his freshman year to his sophomore year, and he put in a lot of work to do that. Uh, now the next step in, in Matt's maturity and development as a player is he's going to be a target, you know, and teams are going to look to uh, keep the ball out of his hands, make every shot he takes difficult, and limit his impact on the game. So now the next step in Matt's maturity is he's got to be able to handle that. Uh, he's got to be able to still score the ball for us, but he's got to be able to trust teammates and find them as he draws more attention. Such a skilled rebounder a season ago. That was one of the biggest surprises for me is how well he did on the glass. Someone of his size and stature, how was he able to be so successful? Uh, he goes after the ball. I mean, it, it's a pretty simple equation. You know, the ball comes off the rim and Matt goes after the ball. And, um, you know, it's often said that the, the, uh, the measure of a good rebounder is the time it takes to discourage him. You know, and it takes a lot of time to discourage Matt. He goes after the basketball. Now, you had a lot of freshmen that played a, a lot of impactful minutes a season ago. One of those, Marvin Prochet, as he comes back for his sophomore season, he's been named a team captain. Talk about the evolution of Marvin to a captain status and also what you look for from him this season. Well, Marvin, uh, even as a freshman, uh, showed leadership. Uh, he showed leadership in huddles during games. He showed leadership during practice, leadership off the court. So uh, he kind of naturally evolved into that position uh, over the course of the summer and into this year by showing leadership more consistently. So we're excited about him as part of, as one of our captains along with Matt. Um, he's evolved as a player, his shooting has gotten better. If you look at his body, he's gotten stronger, spent a lot of time in the weight room. Uh, he's putting the ball on the floor a little bit better. Uh, so we expect him to have a big impact on games this year. Another couple of guys that also have gotten bigger. And again, sophomores coming back. Played a lot of minutes for you last year. Dominic Robb down low, Chris Barton on the perimeter. Start with Dom, but talk about what you can get from each of those players. Well, you know, Dom has, uh, has improved his game around the basket. He's gotten stronger in the weight room, which is important. I think, you know, Dom has some skill level around the rim. You know, he can jump hook you. He can turn around jumper. Uh, he can up and under you. He's got some feel around the basket. In order for him to be able to use that skill, he needed to get stronger so we could get where he wanted to get on the floor in order to make a move. And he's improved in that area a lot. So, you know, we'll look to throw the ball inside to him and we'll look for him to impact the game around the rim offensively and also on the, on the defensive end, you know, both rebounding offensively and defensively for us. And now let's talk a little bit about Chris Barton. To finish last season, he played 95 minutes straight in those final two ball games, including that triple overtime game in the tournament against Canisius. What does Chris need to do to right raise his game in his sophomore season? Yeah, well, Chris, Chris is a, a utility guy. I mean, he can do whatever you need him to do. You need him to guard the other team's best player, he'll do that. You need him to rebound, he'll do that. You need him to make a shot, he'll do that. I mean, he's He's like a utility guy in baseball that you can put in any position and he's going to have a positive effect on the game. So that's going to be Chris's role. That's been his role throughout the uh, preseason and he's done a very, very good job with it. So we're excited about what he can develop into this year. Let's spend a couple minutes now on, on some of your bigger players down low. Mo Taylor, your lone senior, and also Ali too. How have those players looked not only through the summer, but as you've gotten going on some practices and even some scrimmages? Well, both have spent a lot of time, again, in the weight room this summer. That was a priority. You know, our, our slogan for the summer was bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, we needed to do that in order to compete. And uh, Mo and Ali did a good job with that in the weight room. Mo has improved his game uh, in terms of his finishing around the rim. Uh, his role is going to be a guy that can just go after the ball, rebound for us, finish at the basket, either in transition or in the half court, and then defensively be a guy that can just guard anybody. Uh, and Ali has improved his game too. Uh, the thing we worked on a lot with Ali is just slow down in the post. You know, he's okay. effective when he slows down. He plays very hard, and sometimes it's hard for a guy to turn that off, you know, when he has the ball in his hands. Uh, he's done a good job at evolving to that. Catch, locate, see where a double's coming. If there's no double, go into your move and make a poised offensive play. With Mo being the only senior, can you, can you tell a difference as he goes through everything for the final time, his last summer workout, his last scrimmages, and as he gets going in that senior season. Talk about the difference you might see in a player with his last time around. Well, Mo's always been a hard worker, so, so there hasn't been a difference in terms of the work output that he's produced. Uh, but there has been a, a, a step up in leadership. 
You know, like I told our team, we're going to appoint two captains, but a good team has more than two leaders. You know, so Mo has shown leadership, even though he doesn't have a captaincy title. He's in there every day in practice, holding guys accountable, setting an example with his, with his own efforts, uh, and showing leadership on his end. So there's a little bit of a difference there in terms of his effort level. That's always been there. But I, in terms of leadership, he stepped that up because he, he knows this is his last go-around. More to come on the roster, but that uh, triggered something in my mind. I've heard you say that a player-coach team can be even better than a coach-coach team, if you will. Talk about what you mean by that, by having uh, a players-coach team. Well, you know, uh, obviously you have to coach the team. That doesn't mean the players just coach the team and right. the coach sits down and relaxes, you know. Although I like to do that sometimes, <laughs> but no. Um, a player-coach team to me is, is a team that can, can take things on without the coach fixing it for them whether it be um, holding the culture down in a locker room, holding the culture down on campus or in the team room, holding guys accountable uh, during the course of a practice. If there is a lull, being able to raise it themselves, the intensity level without the coach having to raise it. Uh, the same thing during the course of games. Uh, it's important that players take ownership of a team. Basketball is not chess. You can't stop a game, move a guy where you want him. Basketball is about players reacting to things and reacting to them in the right way, whether it's on the defensive end or the offensive end. And uh, you coach them and you want to coach them, but they have to pick up on that and they have to carry that over to themselves and be able to coach themselves at times and, and get themselves in the right spot at times. So, so that's what I mean when I say that to our team. And hopefully that fosters more ownership, more communication, uh, and more accountability among them. I appreciate that, Coach. Thank you for that. Now, two players that I know our fans are, are, are just so much looking forward to seeing, Khalil Dukes and Kevin Larkin, both had to sit out last season due to transfer regulations. Talk about what you've seen from them, both Khalil and Kevin Larkin, as they get going on the campaign. Well, Khalil, uh, Khalil is, is a high-output scorer. You know, he can score the basketball. He can get to the rim. He's very quick. Uh, he can shoot the basketball. Uh, has a very, very good work ethic. You know, every day he's in the gym and practice working hard, and then at night he comes back here and shoots. Uh, he has certain personal goals um, and he has goals for our team and he wants to achieve them and his actions reflect that. Uh, we're excited about getting him this year. You know, he's gonna score the ball for us, he's gonna make shots for us, he'll play the point guard, he'll play uh, off the ball um, and I think he's gonna have a big impact on the game on both ends. Five new faces to the program this year. We'll go one by one. Let's start with, with Dwayne Powell. Talk about Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne is a, will be a sophomore, uh, he's a junior college transfer, he's a point guard. Uh, Dwayne uh, is a guy that we look at as a, as a player that can get us up the floor. You know, I thought our defense was good last year, can always be better, and the same with our rebounding. We didn't score the ball like we needed to, you know, so we have an emphasis this year on defense and rebounding, but on the offensive end, let's get the ball up the floor. You know, now you need the personnel to be able to do that, and I think Dwayne definitely adds to that. He can get the ball up the floor for us. Uh, he's a good passer. He finds guys. He's very good at getting to the lane and creating a shot for someone else. Um, and when he's left open, he can make a shot. So that's going to add to our ability to get the ball up the floor and score early in the shot clock. And it really looks like you've got some great competition in the backcourt with another freshman, James Towns, a lefty. Talk about uh, James. Who's also played extremely well. I've been very impressed with James. Uh, James has made his open shots. Uh, he's been very good with the ball, you know, in terms of valuing the basketball, taking care of it, limiting turnovers. Uh, and he's another guy that can get us up the floor. He can get us up the floor, uh, get guys shots. He's good at getting us an offense. He's showing more leadership as a point guard uh, on the floor day in and day out. Uh, so we're excited about both those point guards, along with Khalil playing some minutes there. Mm -hmm. I think we got like almost like a three-headed monster there where whoever we throw out a team I think can affect the, the, uh, the game. Next player I want to talk about seems like a very strong perimeter shooter. Talk about Shane Gatling. Shane can make shots, you know, when he gets it going, and he's got range too. Um, Shane has done a good job of coming in and uh, adapting to the college game, college practices. Uh, the physicality of the game uh, is, is much greater than on the high school level. Uh, the speed of the game is much greater than on the high school level. And Shane has worked diligently and has adapted to that. Uh, I expect him to, to be uh, a guy that can come into the game, make shots for us, affect the speed of the game and get us up and down. Um, and he's athletic. You know, you watch him during practice, he'll sneak a rebound here and there that maybe you wouldn't have seen uh, in the past out of a wing. So we're excited about having him. Uh, you have another freshman, uh, long and lean, Kyrell Green. Talk about Kyrell. Yeah, Kyrell has a, a great upside for us. Um, now, he's unfortunately been injured in the preseason, and we haven't had him on the floor a lot. Uh, we expect to get him back next week full tilt. 
uh, which I'm looking forward to because I want to see uh, what he does, again, adapting from high school to college with speed of the game, physicality of the game. But I really like Kyrell's upside. I think he's got a great upside. Last player to talk about, and certainly we appreciate all the insight. Greg King, I know he'll have to sit out this season, but just being able to see some of the practices I've had, uh, he's tough to miss in there. Talk about Greg. Well, Greg is going to be a physical presence for us. He's a strong young man, and uh, he's, he's already, I think he's already improved from the time he's been here to now with his feel around the basket and his touch around the basket. Uh, he's very athletic, goes after the ball on both ends, offensively and defensively, rebounding the ball. Uh, and he's, he can score in a low post, you know, so we're excited to have him. I know he's got to sit out this year. There'll be times I wish I could throw him in a uniform, but uh, he'll definitely affect our practices positively. Uh, Coach, let's talk a little bit about the schedule, an exciting non-conference schedule. Local rivals, of course, a game at the Key Bank Center. We'll also play a game at the Barclays Center. And your team also included as part of ESPN's 24 Hours uh, College Basketball Tip-Off Marathon. Talk about the excitement of that non-conference schedule and what you hope to gain from it. Yeah, the schedule is going to be good. Uh, and the schedule comes out as fast and hard starting November 11th. There's not a lot of time in there between games. and you know, a lot, a lot, not a lot of time to adjust and, and make, add some things, subtract some things. Uh, it's going to be a good schedule. It's going to be a challenging schedule for us because a lot of those games are on the road. Uh, we have eight of our, eight of our 11, I believe, non-conference on the road. Uh, so it's going to be challenging for us, and uh, our guys are excited about it and excited to get going. Coach, this is your fourth season here at Nye University. Let's talk a little bit about you. Just one question. How have you changed, do you think, from year one and day one stepping on campus to now as you get going on your fourth season with the team? Um, you know, I think, I don't know that, that you, you change from year to year. I think you constantly adapt from practice to practice, you know. Mm -hmm. um, me personally, I'm the same guy I always am. I don't, I don't change much that way. But, you know, I'm always looking to, uh, to try to steal something from somebody and get a chance to see somebody else's practice or watch somebody else on film. Uh, I spend a lot of time doing that in the summer you know, trying to adapt what we do that might uh, be more fitted to our personnel or might help someone uh, get the ball in the right spot during the course of the game. I try to get out and see some NBA practices. Um, I got to see the Pistons and uh, um, got to see the, uh, the Raptors this year, which was great. Um, so, you know, in terms of me changing personally, uh, I'm kind of the same guy I always am. Uh, but I do like to adapt as a coach and get a chance to see what other people are doing and see how maybe it fits what I want to do. Appreciate that, Coach. Thanks very much. Last thing for you, team goals as you guys kind of look at the landscape for the 2016-2017 season. What are some of those goals that you've put up on the, on the board, if you will? Well, um, our team goal is always to win the league. You know, that's what you go into the season for. You want to win the league and you want to play in the NCAA tournament. That's the goal every year without fail. That's the long-term goal. You have to build to that goal. So what we talk to our team every day about is you come in the gym with 100% effort with the intent of getting better. You come in the gym being 100% coachable, listening and being a good teammate, supporting your teammates. Right? And you come in the gym wanting to get better every day. That's your goal, getting better individually as a player and collectively as a team. That's your focus on a day-to-day -day basis. What's my job in this drill? What's my job in this possession? And I want to execute that to my, my uh, fullest potential, my best ability. So we have those goals every day when we step on the court, and then we have that long-term goal of getting in the NCAA tournament. All right, Coach. Well, we certainly appreciate the insight and all the time shared, and we wish you the best of luck this season. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate it. Nice to see you. Yep. Fans, don't forget to keep it right here at PurpleEagles.com for all the scores, schedules, and highlights information for the 2016-2017 men's team here at Niagara University. Have a great day, everyone.